up let's get into a little bit of that sequential world yo i be that sequential geek welcome to the sequential world y'all what's my point virgin comics virgin motherfucking comics y'all old news right isn't that what this is it's old news been there done that 2004 2005 we had ourselves here this uh, little outbreak of Indian comics. Infect your mind with some of that opposite side of the world sequential. Basically written and produced for a Western audience. I don't know if I want to say entirely opposite side of the world. But they took a bunch of Indian mythological... Themes, stories, um, reimagine them for a Western slash American audience. What's the big deal with this? I mean, I could be pointing out any old brand name from Asia. Uh, why am I choosing Virgin Comics? First of all, listen up. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe... India's population is going to be passing China in 10, 15 years. They're the fastest growing consumer market. It's not as regulated as China. And given we have no trade barriers since like what GATT became the WTO in 1995. It's only a matter of time till people, people's cultures start seething more and more into North America. Our demographics are dwarfed by those in places like China and Asia and India. So why not focus on a particular brand that is not only from Asia, but it's backed by a lot of big names. Uh, back in the day when Virgin Comics first started to uh, later on, when Virgin Comics got changed over to Liquid Comics and then their subsidiary, Graphic India, right there, was born. So let me get into a little bit more of the story here. All right. So first of all, like I said, backed by big names, so that's the why, right? You got the what. Comics themes coming out of India. All right? The who, okay? We're talking Virgin Comics came out around 2005, and it was founded by Richard Branson, Deepak Chopra. I know I'm not pronouncing these people's names right, so uh, please forgive me. You're going to get a lot of that in this video, but I'm trying. All right. Liquid Comics is what Virgin Comics eventually became. 
but back in 2006, it was founded as Virgin Comics LLC. Getting information now, this is amalgamation of information out of wikipedia.org and liquidcomics.com and graphicindia.com and uh, Hollywood Reporter and Variety and a bunch of other sources that I will try and point out during this video. Um, bear with me while we go on a little trip here to India, to the subcontinent. Founded in 2006 as Virgin Comics LLC, which produced stories, many of which are Indian culture related, for an international audience. This is per wikipedia.org. The company was founded by Sir Richard Branson and his Virgin Group, along with author Deepak Chopra, filmmaker Shikhar Kapoor, and entrepreneurs Sharad Devarajan, Suresh Sitharaman, and Gautam Chopra, which is Deepak's son. In August 2008, the company restructured and relocated from New York to Los Angeles. September 24th, 2008, it was announced that Virgin Comics was renamed to Liquid Comics after a management buyout. And then their subsidiary is Graphic India, which I am going to try and get into. Now, please, please be aware that I am not claiming to be an expert on Indian culture. <laughs> I'm pretty sure most of you already know that, but I am not an expert on Virgin Comics. I am trying to introduce a new option for reading and investing in comic books. I find this to be more than just a random spec. And this video is to let you know why. Mainly because one, like I said, the future is Asia. And a big part of that is India. So what, why India? Like, okay, so why choose Virgin Comics? Why, why, why this brand? Boom. Founded by Sir Richard Branson, Deepak Chopra, and we got uh, filmmaker Shikhar Kapoor, as well as Gautam Chopra. His son, Deepak's son, right? You got Suresh Sitaraman, um, Sharad Devarajan, uh, those entrepreneurs. So Richard Branson, man, that's a big name. Deepak Chopra, that's a big name. Uh, his son, Gotham, um, I, I know I'm not pronouncing these names correctly once again. So, um, damn, bear with me. Huge names, all right? This is a, they ain't no fool around type of names. Furthermore, we're going to get into some more big names. Let's switch the camera over to the computer screen so I can cite some sources. TheRap.com. Check it, check it, check it, check it out. Peter Shernan. Now, if anybody knows who Peter Shernan is, boom, this whole video is over. Um, you're already convinced then that I'm right and anybody else who disagrees with me is wrong. God bless America. Amen. That's right. Peter Shernan wants to build the Marvel of India. Don't take that lightly. Peter Shernan. This ain't no bullshit right here. I already mentioned Richard Branson, Deepak Chopra. CA, the Asian investment arm of the Shernan Group, has acquired a minority stake in Graphic India. So I'm going to go through a little timeline here to support my argument of why you should be interested in reading and investing in Virgin Comics. Starting off here in 2013. So what happened is, and I will get at who this Mr. Shernan is. 2013, okay, first we've got Peter Shernan taking a minority stake into Graphic India, all right, which is the subsidiary of Liquid Comics, which is the... This is per Wikipedia, in case you can't tell, which is the um, new name of Virgin Comics LLC. Graphic India launched in two, excuse me, launched in 2012 as a subsidiary of Liquid Comics is a prominent American comic book company founded by Sir Richard Branson and Deepak Chopra, among others. CA Media and Liquid Comics will now jointly own the company and Liquid will contribute 
a substantial comic book library of Indian characters to Graphic India. Okay, and this article at The Wrap continues, CA Media will try to help Graphic India build a franchise around those characters from new print and digital comics to animated shorts. Now, I know not much has been going on with Graphic India uh, from what we've been seeing, but there have been uh, some efforts at Cartoon Network, I believe. Uh, as you can see right here, Sharad Devarajan, co-founder of Graphic India, will be CEO of the company and will remain executive chairman of Liquid Commons. Under his leadership, the company will launch a series of new projects in the coming year. Graphic India has already partnered with former Marvel chief Stan Lee and POW Entertainment to create Lee's first superhero for the Indian market, Chakra the Invincible. That's another big name right there. Excuse me, have you ever heard of him? Stan Lee? Chakra is born after teenager Raju Rai develops a technology-enhanced suit that unleashes the mystical chakras of the body. Lee will collaborate with Indian artists and creators to develop animated clips and comics. Now let's fast forward three more years. So at first, Graphic India had an investment from CA, I think it's the Shernan Asia, whatever, from the Shernan Group. Um, and then again, they raised some money three years, two years later from uh, 2013. Now this is uh, 2015 over at Variety.com. Graphic India raises $2.8 for mobile content creation. The financing was led by CA Media, Asian investment arm of Peter Shernan's The Shernan Group, that had acquired a stake in Graphic India in 2013. The financing will be used to create a content in English, Hindi, Tamil, and other Indian languages for Indian youth to consume on their mobile devices. India has more than 850 active mobile connections and 550 million people under the age of 25. This is from 2015 though, by the way, as I've already stated. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now who the heck is this guy right here? Is that Kevin Feige? No. Is that Walt Disney? No. That's Mr. Peter Shernan. And he wants to have Graphic India, Liquid Comics, become the, like the Disney of India. It's a big deal considering India is the largest market, fastest growing consumer market on the planet. Who cares, right? What's the big deal with Mr. Shernan? Well, let me... Well, let me tell you the big deal of Mr. Shernan, a little bit about his background. Peter Shernan is an American businessman and investor. He is the chairman and CEO of the Shernan Group, TCG, founded in 2010. Okay, so he worked for News Corp until uh, 2009. What's the big deal with that? Well, the only person he reported to was Rupert Murdoch. News Corp around, um, yeah, okay, in 2013, it says right here, it's split. Um, the, f the world's fourth largest media group in terms of revenue. Damn. Prior to starting TCG, Shernan served as President and Chief Operating Officer of News Corp and Chairman and CEO of the Fox Group from 1996 to 2009. Wow. Uh, we also have got uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. President-elect Joe Biden. Um, and uh, his VP happens to be from India, or her mom's from India, excuse me, Kamala Harris. The politics of Shernan is uh, he's recently donated to the Democratic Party. And 
He's hosted Barack Obama at his home for a fundraiser in 2013. And he also supported Hillary Clinton in the run-up for the 2016 presidential election. And now we've got Joe Biden and um, Ms. Harris coming into power with their regime, which seems to align with Mr. Shernan, which I find the stars are aligned, so to speak, right? With uh, investing in Liquid Comics. Let's go to the official website. This is liquidcomics.com real quick. So unlike the variant covers that we have here in the United States or certain variants that come out, like the director's cut, um, Virgin Comics had this one type of sub-brand for their comics. They called it the director's cut. And essentially what that was was designed to showcase the work of film directors um, like Guy Ritchie, John Woo, um, Shakar Kapoor, uh, Terry Gillum. So we got, once again, another reason to be interested in this label. Um, it's had a lot of big names go through it. Maybe, you know, you might want to look back and say, oh, well, well, at least they weren't successful. But I still think they're on the radar of a lot of these directors. Um, and real quick here is Graphic Pop, the subsidiary of uh, Liquid Comics. Uh, Graphic India. Just wanted to uh, point out a resource in case somebody wanted to check out some samples of their comics. Shernan, producer of Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, and he also is a founder, co founder of Hulu, and he was the Shernan group was also involved in the movie Ford versus Ferrari. Some more modern news on the Shernan Group. Uh, they, in 2019, this is per Deadline.com, they made a deal with Netflix to provide some content, uh, original content. Fashion designer Masaba Gupta, pictured here, stars in this one television show. It's kind of like a sex in the city, it sounds like. Um... Obviously not related to the comic books, but nonetheless, we have Shernan Group being involved in some relevant distributors and original content makers like Netflix. Graphic Pops website. Extremely slow internet connection. Here is Graphic India. They have comics, motion comics, read comics. All right, click on read comics. Here we go. So when you get a chance, check out graphicpop.com and you've got comics here, but then there's read comics and you can check out some samples. This is a Greg Horn cover. Uh, that's actually issue number two of the original Devi series. And then it got reprinted um, as a trade paperback with Greg Horn's cover right there. Let's see if I can sample some of the artwork. Avatar X, as a matter of fact, has to do with this Indian avatar. When I say avatar, basically they need to have a human host in order to exist on this plane. And I believe there's these two brothers, I haven't read this in a few years, two brothers 
one of them's kind of a slacker, the other one is an achiever, has his shit together. He passes away, and so this avatar then claims the other brother that's more of a underachiever um, as his host. And Avatar X is on Earth in order to help save it against the end of the world. Uh, he's arrived too early, uh, basically. Uh, as you can see, the artwork here is pretty fantastic. And the scenery takes place in India. And this particular comic, I know, is written by Grant Morrison. The artwork, I can go back. Edison Manu George. Cool. One moment. Alright, back to the comics. All these comics that you see here, I got between two and four dollars a piece off of eBay. Um, some of them I might have found um, in a back issue bin, but it's not a lot of dollar back issue bins that I've found here in uh, the Denver area. Um, I know that this one actually I did get for a couple bucks. Uh, it's a very nice Snake Woman cover, issue number seven. It actually has two covers. Um, this red cover, as well as a blue cover that has some like red highlights, so to speak, I think from this lamp. Snake Woman, per Comic Vine, is a reinvention of India's stories of the snake, a.k.a. Naga. Jessica Peterson is a normal, somewhat reserved young woman. Living in L.A., Jessica Peterson, born 1981, first kiss, 1996, graduated with honors, 2002, moved to Los Angeles, 2006. Within three years, she will have killed 68 men. Student, waitress, mass murderer, Jessica is Snake Woman. And that's originally under the director's cut, written by... Zeb Wells, with interior art by Michael Gatos. Let's move on and get on with the get-go. And that particular cover right there for Snake Woman, issue number seven, is by Vivek Shind, S-H-I-N-D-E. Synopsis reads, out of Comic Vine, Jessica Peterson has accepted her role as the Snake Woman and has agreed to exterminate 68 reincarnated souls before they can kill her. But what happens when she discovers that not every member of the 68 is evil? Has cover date is January 2007. You'll notice there's a lot of themes of rebirth, reincarnation, avatars, like Ramayan 3392 AD is a futuristic story. Formerly called Ramayan Reborn, is a comic series published by Virgin Comics based upon Ramayana. Once again, I never said I could pronounce any of these names. It is written by Shamik Dasgupta, art by Abhishek Singh. That cover, by the way, is Alec, Alex Ross. It features a reimaging of the historic classic in a post-apocalyptic future. The story primarily deals with the last kingdom of humans who are fighting demons called Asuras to survive. The series' prime protagonist is the heroic human prince Rama, who alongside his brothers aims to bring down the demon lord Ravan. And then in September 2006, uh, total issues 8, and that is the third age of mankind. The world after a nuclear third world war is divided into two continents. And Ramayan 3392 AD, this comic right here, it ended up being um, rebooted when the label was 
switched over to Graphic India. This is the uh, free comic book Dave issue. The 2013 reboot of Ramayan 3392 AD. Stories by Ron Mars, Bart Sears, Michael Avon Oming, Jim Starlin, uh, David Peterson, Abhishek Singh, and Luke Ross. Here is the Avatar X comic that I mentioned before and showed some content from the this particular comic right here, this Avatar X by Grant Morrison. It's got a bunch of covers. I know of at least four separate covers. This is cover C. Um, on the back of it, you know, it's a direct edition. It indicates 00131. So it's the first printing, third cover. And the sample for this you can read at graphicpop.com. That is the 1 in 10 retailer incentive variant cover. And that cover is by Luke Ross. As far as I understand, there's only four variant covers for Avatar X. Wow, I'm definitely in the 21st century. I said the word only four variant covers. All right. Published in 2016. Now, Devi. I'm not sure if it's pronounced Devi or Devi. Per comicvine.com. Devi is the divine entity created to defeat Lord Bala by the pure gods. Though divine, she is not immortal and must be born into a human host. Thus, she is an avatar. The origin reads, Devi is a celestial warrior goddess created as a means to defeat the evil renegade god Lord Bala in the second century of man by the pure gods who are unable to defeat him themselves. Thus, each of the gods sacrificed a bit of their own divine power and used it to create a single divine entity. Though due to to their fear of betrayal, as with Bala, she was not granted immortality, Devi. As such, the Durapasya, the warriors of light, who were the followers of the pure gods, were given the rights to infuse Devi into a human host. Whenever Bala rises again to threaten the universe, Devi was reborn within the body of a human host. She was created by Shikhar Kapoor, and stories are written by Siddharth Koshin and Samit Basu. Art rendered by Mukesh Singh. In the present day, Tara Mehta, M-E-H-T-A, was chosen to be the next Devi. She's a social worker that was dating a crime boss who was also Bala's most trusted general. Powers and abilities per comic find. Um, she has these powers that are from multiple gods. Um, skill with every weapon ever dreamed by mortal or god. Strength of the Mirbadans united. Unparalleled knowledge of strategy in battle and always appear in battle when most needed. It's from Mars, the war god. Um, Never the victim of love, lust, passion, or desire. Set all men's hearts afire, wanted by those of whom she must kill. And that's from Karma, Kama, excuse me, the love god. From Ra, the god of the sun, she has light that fears no shadow, burning the sinful and strengthening the righteous, annihilating darkness in all forms. From Capital, the wealth god. She has unending wealth, labor, and capital, even under adverse conditions. From Interface, messenger of the gods. Perfect PR, killer charisma. From Oblivion, the death god. No remorse for those who must be killed. Calm and forgiveness. And from Buddha, king of the gods. 
flight, lightning, and his blessing. In 2016, when Devai was rebooted under Graphic India, this is the Jenny Frizen cover. There is a black and white cover, as well as a separate cover that is by... This is the regular cover right here. Uh, the one by Eric Basaldua. Excuse me, it's Basaldua. That's the one in five retailer incentive cover. And then there is a limited edition sketch cover, which is basically the black and white of this, which is limited to 250. Um, do you want to know what that looks like? Looks like that. Pretty hot. Black and white. Shakar Kapoor and Siddharth Koshin story. Um, Akash Singh art. Jenny Frizen cover. Graphic India 2016. Paid 150 bucks for that plus shipping. Um, basically. $15 shipping off the e-bases. Don't you know? Pretty sweet. Alright. So we have the Virgin Comics issue that came out in 2006 and then the 2016 reboot out of uh, Graphic India. 2006 Virgin Comics imprint that ran for a total of 20 issues. Now in between the 2006 Virgin Comics, Deve, and this uh, Graphic India imprint. There was also a Witch Witchblade crossover in April of 2008. Um, there was a Witchblade slash Devi comic in April 2008. And then you have a Devi Witchblade, number one, that followed up right after that. And the writing for those Devi Witchblade crossover uh, stories were both written by Ron Mars. Nice. Also, regarding one of the founders of here is Sharad Devarajan, so sorry for not pronouncing this cat's name right, uh, co-founder and CEO of Graphic India. In 2004, I don't know if y'all remember, there was a Sp India, Spider-Man in India, or like an Indian version of Spider-Man. Uh, it's this co-founder of Graphic India uh, slash Virgin Comics that had worked with Marvel as the creator of a new reinvention of Spider-Man as an Indian boy growing up in Mumbai, transforming Peter Parker into Pavitir Prabhakar. Unlike traditional translations of Western characters into foreign markets, new, the new series, Spider-Man India, was heralded as one of the industry's first Trans creations. So these titles, they're also trying to make into movies and television shows, video games, the whole gamut. I know that this um, Ramayan 3392 AD, uh, there's been more than one attempt to make a movie with uh, of this. With uh, It says here, Mandalay Entertainment. I'm not sure if anybody's familiar with that name. Um, really glad that I made this video. I'm just kind of pushing this, 
putting this out here to kind of push people to um, hopefully give me some feedback on any type of Indian comic books or if anybody is aware of Graphic India or any further developments with Graphic India. I would appreciate any type of feedback as, um, just, as I said, you know, there's a lot of big names, directors, artists, writers, um, businessmen involved with this brand name Graphic India. I'm thinking there's a future with Graphic India. I hope my argument is uh, sound. Um, once again, please let me know your feedback. My last two comics that I got, uh, the more modern label um, under Graphic India is Dragonfly and the Global Guardians. And this comic here, Black Tiger. Um, it's interesting with Black Tiger, I'm not quite sure what the deal is, but they also have a title called Shadow Tiger. This is the B cover. The A cover says Shadow Tiger instead of Black Tiger. I know that he can release energy bolts and he kind of has like this armor that he wears. I'm not entirely too familiar with Black Tiger. Let me see what I found here. This cover right here is by uh, Mukesh. Shadow Tiger. As a kid, Rajan Shah lost his parents to a hit-and-run driver. Resigned to a life of poverty, Rajan is stunned when a mysterious benefactor pays for his education. And this comic, Black Tiger, came out in 2015. Dragonfly and the Global Guardians came out in 2017, actually. Pencils and inks on that cover is Jivan J. Kang, J-E-E-V-A-N. And that script is by Ron Martz, and the interior pencils are by Tiago Vale. Inks, Emmanuel Braga. The synopsis I got at comics.org for Dragonfly and the Global Guardians, it's basically about a children of a band of international heroes who died saving the Earth from the Destructoids. They come together to fight the alien invaders once again. All right, this is some really cool artwork. I'm not quite sure why the B cover says Black Tiger and the A cover says Shadow Tiger. If anybody has any info on that, uh, hit me back. Thanks. This is a work in progress here. But I'm doing my research, and one of the important character-based assets, um, my guess, coming out of Graphic India is this... Uh, Chakra the Invincible. Um, the first appearance is this free comic book day issue right here that came out in 2013. And that is a collaboration with Stan Lee's Pal Entertainment. And then a couple years later, you've got uh, Chakra the Invincible, this free comic book day issue right here. Uh, that came out the same year as his first issue. Oop, uh, let's see if I can get some run here. Okay. So we've got technology clashing with the mystical chakras. From the digital series with over 25 million views on tunes.tv. Available now on all apps of Angry Birds. The Chakra the Invincible is an Indian animated superhero film based on the main character created by Stan Lee with Sher Sharad Devarajan and Gotham Chopra. It aired in English and Hindi, but also in Tamil and Telugu. The movie is produced by Graphic India and Power Entertainment and was premiered on Cartoon Network on the 30th of November, 2013. Um, so basically, this character's first appearance in this free comic book day comic on the left there, as well as the Cartoon Network premiere, is the same year when Peter, Sh Peter Shernan's Asian investment arm ended up becoming involved in the development of Graphic India, which was one year after Graphic India 
was launched as a subsidiary of Liquid Comics in 2012. So basically we got Richard Branson and Deepak Chopra founding Virgin Comics around 2005. And then after Virgin Comics becomes Liquid Comics in 2012, their subsidiary, Graphic India, brand name right there, their logo, Graphic India, that was born a year later in 2013. The Shernan Group ended up becoming investors in in this company. Um, to what extent, the information that I've read, a lot of it says minority stakeholder. Um, I'm still doing some research. So as far as whether that becomes 50-50 or majority stakeholder uh, to be determined. If anybody knows any further information, Shernan's involvement with Graphic India uh, and Liquid Comics, please leave a comment. Um, the more information, the better, because this isn't just some random publisher out of Asia I'm calling out, and it's not just some random publisher or uh, graphics media uh, investor here out of India. This is um, Peter Shernan, right? The second in command to Rupert Murdoch, the co-founder of Hulu, the um, Shernan Group, which was involved with Ford versus Ferrari, as well as the planet, the recent Planet of the Apes films. Um, there's a lot going on, as well as with this collaboration with Stan Lee. This is one of the last uh, Stan Lee brainchilds. And i um, thinking there's a lot of momentum going on here with not just this character-based asset alone, Chakra the Invincible. Chakra the Invincible ran a total of 10 issues. That was back in 2015. Uh, ended April 2016. Chakra was also paired up with one of their creations called M Mighty Girl. It's called Stanley Chakra the Invincible, The Mystery of Mighty Girl. And that comic came out in 2017. Some fairly recent stuff. That comic went ran for six issues, by the way. So we got a lot of great, innovative, character-based assets coming out of Graphic India. It's a lot of information I just threw at y'all. Yeah. I have no idea who these names are I'm playing. I know it's Indian hip-hop you're listening to. That's what I'm talking about right here. That's right. Maybe that sequential geek. Welcome to your sequential world. You got any questions, any information on this you want me to look up? Leave a comment. I'll be glad to get back to you. Peace. Stay safe, y'all. Thanks for watching.